All right, I gotta get all my things together and go ahead and get outside as soon as I drink this and get a little warm. But today I'm gonna go over a couple of things. One is I'm gonna show you how I set up my original Vigo garden bed. So what did I use, especially on that tall bed to be able to fill it up? but which I think it worked really well. I'm super happy with it, but I want to experiment. So I'm going to clean the bed for this season and show you what I'm going to do because I want to see what happens. Everybody uses this soil, so I'm going to try it and see if it works out okay. So, and then I'm going shopping and getting some flowers because I want to add a little bit of color. So, all right, let's get going finish my tea last year the garden did really well we got so much to harvest from this really beautiful corner that we developed it is a year old and everything is doing great but I want to experiment some more but first let me show you how I set up my garden beds so that I wouldn't have to spend too much money and since I was only doing two of them I didn't want to have to haul a truck of soil to my home. Once I placed the cardboard down, I ended up that we had to cut this beautiful cherry tree because the roots were going under the foundation of the neighbor's home. So it was not dry, but I ended up using it anyway. And it does happen that I did some research and the branches when they're alive, they will take the nitrogen off the soil so you do have to amend the soil more every season if you have uh, life branches like this and they're not dry and then I went ahead and looked for some straw but I wanted to make sure it didn't have any pesticides or anything so make sure that you ask if you're adding straw is great I was able to fill a third of this garden bed with it I did not want to fill it more than that. I know some people do it like two thirds all the way out before they put the soil down, but I wanted to be able to have enough soil for things like peppers and tomatoes that have a very deep root system. Yes, as, as you may have suspected, I did use my fish compost and that has done really well. So I did sort of a lasagna instead of doing like a really thick compost layer and then soil i went ahead and did compost soil compost soil i just wanted to experiment i've been just kind of playing in the garden and it's what i did it seemed to have worked just fine and this compost was great because since i told you it has a lot of hardwood in it it just seemed to do really really well i didn't have to add a lot of mulch at all i just did some leaves in the fall that I added on top so that it would allow some microorganisms to break down to develop as it breaks down and uh, that really helped. I did use this pro mix uh, soil because you get a lot on this bags but I will say I'm not a big fan of garden soil, back garden soil. I much rather probably use topsoil and compost and you know add some vermiculite. I don't use Coco core which I know is good to use on the beds but this is the one that would give me a lot on the bags and I ended up using it to try it it did fine as you could see I grew a lot but I don't know I just felt like it was drying up a little bit it didn't seem to have enough 
peat moss I don't think I just wasn't sure but that's why I'm making changes this year I want to try something else it's not inexpensive but I just want to experiment this year again and then I added some vermiculite in, in the layers that I was doing I mixed that up really really well Biotone is really good. I think that's one of the things that made such a big difference on the garden bed. I went ahead and just added it to the garden bed because I was going to plant right after. I got the garden beds a little bit late in the season. So I ended up adding that and some warm earth casting to the whole bed. Usually these two things I add to each plant. When I dig a hole, I put it under, but I did it on the whole garden bed because I was pretty late to get going on the season because I ended up having to set up this whole corner as the new garden bed area. Now that I had the root system taken care of, I knew I wanted to add something that would help and it needed to be organic and I thought I'm going to add some bone meal because it is an organic fertilizer and it's really good for the health and growth of your flowering plants. So I think it lasts around two months. My name is Melba and I am an urban gardener. I love to grow as much as I can in food and flowers. I don't do it without one of them. So if you want to learn how to design a tiny garden and get the most out of it, go ahead and follow. One thing I do is I leave a lot of the leaves and the plants in the bed. I don't do no-till kind of thing because I have a tiny garden so I do leave them through the winter so that the microorganisms start working on the soil really well and then now I just take everything out except for like sage or something like that that I'm gonna go ahead and and use again but, but I'm gonna cut it down because it's burned from the cold weather I can see I think these are violets um, Pansies or violets growing right here. So I'm gonna leave those. The soil feels better than last year. It's pretty nice. Oh, there's little worms in here. This is where I'm going to experiment. I am using Fox Farm, the happy frog. <laughs> it is the garden soil. I just, it's a garden soil, potting soil. I just feel like I want to try this because everybody speaks about this soil. Again, I don't think you need to spend the money. It's pretty expensive. And really doing potting soil or uh, a garden soil is not necessary, but I want to see what the difference will be adding this this year. So let's see how the plants grow in it. And being that the soil did so well with me leaving the root system, I think it may be a very good year. So I'm going to add this um, asomite, but you really don't need it. I'm gonna use it because I've had it for a while, but I will never buy it again. I think it's just natural in the soil. I don't think it's something you really need, but I'm gonna sprinkle some through all of my beds. It's just, I think like limestone, it's got magnesium and calcium. So, but I honestly don't think you need it. 
going to use it that as well right One last thing I'm gonna put on is some garden town to let him feed the bed. Just I like to put it on. I like to put some warm compost too, but I'm gonna wait until I plant my seedlings. So for now, I'm just gonna do a sprinkle of the garden town. It's for any kind of vegetable. Okay, this one. I know a few things growing like this parsley survived the winter so I am going to go ahead and cut it and leave part of it I haven't grown any any parsley from seed yet so it's good that there's some growing right now in the bed there's another variegated sage in here that I'm gonna prune back because there's babies underneath get that out and all of those those are all pansies coming out which is kind of nice they're edible so I'm happy about that waiting for it to stop raining so I can go outside again on this bed I have left all the roots also in the garden bed throughout the winter because I do want the microorganisms to sort of develop and have something to work from and now that I have to plant I cannot leave the roots in there so I had to dig all the roots out of any of the plants I'm not gonna keep and all I did is the same thing and then on the other bed is I put some compost and some of the Fox Farm soil and I'm gonna see how it does but I added that as well as the asomite and uh, fertilizer the slow release fertilizer so we'll see how it does this season and if this expensive soil is worth the money this is kai and she's not doing very well today because she hurt an eye so i'm just checking on her but here this is part of my little homestead and she provides me with the best thing ever for my garden beds i'll show you exactly what i used and talk a little bit about it they do a great job in fertilizing your garden and providing a great important nutrient i get to spoil her but she also offers a whole lot to me in the winter we get so much rain that our garden beds get depleted from the nitrogen so i don't bother going ahead and giving any amendment to my garden beds in the winter or in the fall come spring in the end of march i go ahead and amend it and the biggest thing that i struggle with is the nitrogen so the bunny gives me a ton of free nitrogen amendment and that is on the poop all it is is the hay that they eat it dries up and i place it right in the garden as it rains and the the soil starts moving it's gonna go ahead and crumble and give me nitrogen I got a few flowers I want to get some color in that corner I cannot plant on the right side but on the left side I have a little corner that I can do some spring planting the right side has some dahlias and other things that I don't want to mess with because I'm hoping they will come back I ended up buying some flowers I got these English daisies really pretty and I bought these other ones these are daisies also yeah English daisies but it's more like a pom-pom look where it's a little cleaner got some ranunculus which is dry i have to plant it but i have a few of these that i bought i already started planting some and i have to pinch them because they're done 
And then another one that's really pretty in the spring. This is a rock foil and this is great to grow around rocks. And here's another one I can notice this is looking a lot better. And these have been sitting here. I haven't, it's been raining. I haven't been able to plant them. So I want to get to them now. And then some candy tuft. So cute. I planted already a lot of this, which I'll show you in another video. But I'm going to get going planting this because they're going to die on me. Look at all the moss that's growing in here. going to plant some of this. I'm going to divide them and plant them on the corners here. Growing on this bed, the green giant tomato, if I get any to germinate. <laughs> and I have some issues with the tomatoes this year. So I'm going to put the green giant tomato here and then I am going to grow some lettuces, the pansies here, and the, the panny pan squashes I'm going to grow on another location. But I think I'm going to look at what else to grow. Frolly peppers on four locations here. Do four peppers. I don't put them very very deep I feel like onions don't like to be very deep so I put it to like right at the edge where the roots start right there so. and I'm gonna be harvesting this this week and they'll grow again and give some little purple flowers to chise which are so pretty so that will be really pretty in the corner for color and I'm gonna get some pansies to put in the corner on each of those. So I have four that I bought. I cut the flowers so the roots would get established okay. There's one little flower going up there. But these are great for colors and these are the large flowers. I bought these but I'm growing the ones with the small flowers and those I'm gonna put on different pots and on my green stuff and on the smaller beds which are much narrower for now I break the root just a little bit split it it doesn't do anything to them pansies are so hardy just to help them because they're a little root bound from being at the store I am going through some of my seeds to try to find some of the snap peas that I want to go ahead and add to my trellises. I want to do something different this year and plant those. So I'm going to find the snap peas and then I can get outside. I'm not going to soak them or anything. I'm just going to put them like this. I'm going to put two on each hole. Oh, maybe I'll do three because one of them didn't look that great. And I'm only
only placing them like maybe a, twice as deep as the seed maybe half an inch down it doesn't need a whole lot two more okay 